Hey guys, uh, so as someone who runs two graphics cards, uh, an older GPU, RTX 4070, it is technically older, okay, <clears throat> don't fight with me on that, and a 9070 XT, I have to contend with two graphics cards in DaVinci's Resolve, and no, they do not work together, unfortunately, even though they probably could, and it would probably make rendering a whole lot faster. So, how do I handle this? Well, let me show you what happens when we open it normally. All right, it's doing its thing. Great, it loads, and then... There, okay, you're gonna hit save, all right? Now, we're gonna open it again. Hopefully this time it will actually show. Do-do-do-do-do. Do you ever wonder if, like, the universe hates you when you open stuff up again and it doesn't work even though it worked the first time. Yeah, I have that issue. There you go. This is the issue that many of you are facing when you have laptops. And it's annoying. Here's the reason. It's because it detects two GPUs. It doesn't know how to handle both sets of VRAM or anything like that. So what do you do? I open up DaVinci's Resolve in here, right here. This is called Lutris, and we're going to be setting it up for you today. So you click this plus button right up here at the top, and then you add locally installed game. We're going to just call this Resolve Studio 20, because I already have one. Your runner is going to be set to Linux. Okay, your executable is going to be in here. Watch this. Opt, resolve, okay, bin, right there, and resolve. There you go. Now, runner options, there are none. If we go to system options, you'll notice there's a GPU section. We are going to set this to 4070. If you're using an AMD GPU, okay, you could set this to AMD. Now, this will make it so it's only with this graphics card. The other graphics card will not show up at all. Basically, Lutris is blacklisting it, all right? So now when we hit play, as you can see, it's right there, it's opening. And we open up our timeline, there's no air. And that is for a very, very, very good reason because we just fixed it. How cool is that? Where's the point that I actually end up opening a terminal and seeing how long it takes? So that's the installation. Okay. Y'all said I should try Linux Mint. I'm gonna put this at the end of this video. I have a video of it. I did. I put it into VM because I can't boot it on my actual hardware because my hardware is too new. Check this out. This is funny. This is me opening up the terminal for the first time. Or at least it should be. Where is it? Okay. All right. Ready? So I'm going to go down. I'm going to click the button. You see how long that took to open? You see how long? Now, this may be in a VM, but that's not an excuse for something to open slowly. I want you to look at this right about here. See, with terminal opening slowly, I'm just like, okay, it's it's this has got to be a joke, right? There's no way that this opens this slowly. So what I ended up doing is I forced off the virtual machine. And uh, I'm probably going to be doing that right now. Yeah, see? Put that over there. Look at that. Outside of the terminal, it opens instantly. Okay. And then this is me showing the X Wayland version. Because the X Wayland version is kind of important. And the kernel version, because again, also important for performance reasons. And we're going to shut this down. Now, we're opening up an Arch Linux VM. Okay. Watch this. Look how fast this thing boots. Log in. Instantaneous up. I click the terminal at the bottom. 
Okay, there I go. Terminal button's right there. It's open. It's not the VM's fault. Now, I did test this also on my janky-ass laptop in the back. It takes the same amount of time on full hardware that is accelerated to open up a console. That is sad. It's one of the lightest parts of the entire DE. It's not even part of the DE. It's an application that stands alone from the DE. Embarrassing. Okay, so I made this video to help you guys understand if you're on a dual GPU setup on how to uh, get everything going and working. So I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, uh, there are multiple ways you could help support this channel and I would appreciate it. Trust me, it's a hard time right now for probably everybody. If you can, you know, feel free to become a member. There's, it's really cheap. There's like three levels. One's two bucks, the other one's $5, and the other one's $11 because there's weird taxes and stuff. So you can become a member on YouTube. And there's also Ko-Fi for, that does monthly donations as well. So that's kind of the same thing. And just subscribing helps loads. It brings more people in, feeds the algorithm, leave a comment, all sorts of stuff. You're not obligated to do any of it, but it really does help. I have a goal to reach 50,000 subscribers by the end of the year, and any little bit helps. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.